I'll bet stuff like this has happened to you, too. Did you ever get to the bottom of a page and then can't remember anything you just read? Or have studied for what seems like hours, only to find that the next day you recall very little of what you read? Frustrating and annoying, isn't it? But don't worry, I've got a surprisingly simple solution for you. Here's how to remember more of what you read with something called the production effect. The best part is that you'll be amazed at how easy it is and how fast it works. Also, just when you think I've covered it all, I have one last tip that puts the icing on the cake, so don't miss out on it. Hey there, smart people. Your favorite Uncle Matt back with you, and in this episode, we're going to cover a few simple strategies to being able to remember more of what you read. The weirdest thing about these tactics is how rarely they're taught. You would think that every single teacher would make sure you were doing this stuff because it works so darn well. If you enjoy what I publish here, please like, share, and post a comment. Also subscribe with notifications enabled so you won't miss any of my new stuff. I've set a goal to hit 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I'm getting close, so please help if you can. First, let's sort the kinds of books you'll be reading into four categories. The most difficult are textbooks that deliver tons of facts and details. Maybe you're studying algebra or calculus or statistics. Perhaps it's chemistry, biology, physics, or anatomy. Those are not topics you can deal with casually. Because they are full of theories, formulas, and new terminology, you've got to take more time with them. Then you've got subjects that are less intense, like various history classes, social sciences, psychology, art, and languages. But you've still got a lot of facts, dates, names, and concepts to retain. This next category is different from what you deal with in school. You've got books that teach you stuff, like learning to cook or learning to code or play a musical instrument or games like chess. As you might imagine, the techniques to remembering more with those types of books is going to be a little different than with books that you're reading purely for academic reasons. Of course, there are lots of books that you can read just for the pure enjoyment of it. So if you got lost in the world of detective stories or romance novels or even fantasy series like Lord of the Rings or The Hunger Games, it's less important to use any of the techniques I'm going to cover here. So let's start with a couple of general rules for helping you remember more of whatever you're reading. In my breakthrough video that's often been copied by others called How to Absorb Textbooks Like a Sponge, I talk about the benefit of giving yourself multiple previews of the material before you actually read a chapter. In short, you want to glance over each page, read any quizzes that might be at the end of a chapter, go back and read the headlines, subheadlines, and any captions on illustrations. Basically, read anything that's in bold font. You do that in order to precondition your mind and prepare it for what's to come. In the movies, they give you a trailer, which is a preview of coming attractions. Something else to keep in mind. At some point, your mother probably wagged her finger at you saying something like, you can only remember what you want to remember. <laughs> she said it to scold you. But guess what? Mom was right. You can only remember what you want to remember. So even if you think you're bored with a subject, you need to find a way to get interested in it. Next, I've talked about the concept of MSP in a number of my videos. You've heard of ESP, extrasensory perception. This is MSP, multisensory perception. What that means is the more senses you use when you're learning something, the better it will stick inside your head. If all you do is read, then you're only using the sense of vision. However, if you take handwritten notes, as I talk about in some of my other videos, like this one, then you're also using your sense of touch. The things you should write down as you're reading are new words with their meanings, the names of people, places, and things, formulas in math and science, and important numerical data. Don't underline or highlight with a marker. It's a waste of your time. And handwriting notes is far superior to typing into apps or a computer. In another video, I'll get into how to structure your notes. But for now, all you need to know is that after you've finished reading a chapter, take a moment to summarize the main points. If you can't recall them, then just go back to those specific places and review them. 
Notice, I said to write your summary after you finished reading the chapter. Now, let me give you some super sauce. Here's something that's been heavily researched and studied, but very few people teach it. It's called the production effect. What you're going to do is read out loud to yourself, but you're going to do it in a special way. No, you're not just going to read a chapter out loud and let it go with that. No, instead, do this. After reading out loud alone, put your book aside and then have a conversation with yourself. Talk to yourself as if you were hanging out with your friend. Your intention here is to recall out loud what you just read. You might imagine you're talking with a friend or a group of people. Of course, it's even better if you have a study buddy or a study group who is like-minded and supportive. Put what you just read into your own words. You want to simplify it as much as possible. Pretend you're teaching someone who doesn't know anything about the topic. Let's go back to my point about MSP, multi-sensory perception. When you read out loud, the information goes into your eyes, then comes out of your mouth, and then goes back in through your ears. When you add handwritten notes to this process, the results will amaze you. You're using vision, speech, hearing, and when you write, the sense of touch. But here's the thing, the real magic happens when you teach it. Even if you're just talking to yourself, you want to explain what you just read. This forces your mind to process the information in a completely new way. Here's a great way of understanding how to learn anything faster. Learning doesn't happen when information goes into you. It happens when you get the information to come out of you. It goes in when you're reading or listening to a lecture or watching a video. It comes out when you take handwritten notes, when you talk out loud to yourself or with your study buddies. It works best when you attempt to teach it. There's an old expression you may have heard of before that says, the best way to learn is to teach. And now you know why. Regarding this thing called the production effect, it was documented in the Waterloo study, which is a research study conducted by Colin M. McLeod and Noah Foran at the University of Waterloo in Canada. The purpose was to investigate the relationship between memory retention and the act of actively producing information, such as reading aloud or writing things down. The researchers explored whether the act of producing information rather than just passively receiving information during learning had a significant impact on memory retention. It was proven that if you read information the way I described, it creates far stronger neural connections than reading silently or hearing someone else read like with an audio book or a lecture or even listening to a recording of yourself reading the content. Like I said, the learning happens when you get the information to come out of you rather than when it's getting put into you. This exact concept is what will help you tremendously with books that teach you how to do something. So, if you're reading about cooking, find ways to apply it in the kitchen as soon as possible. If you're reading about music theory, go to your instrument and attempt to apply what you're learning, like the circle of fifths, for example. If you want to learn how to code, then do coding. If you want to repair cars or crochet, then get busy and do it. Once again, the idea is to produce a result. You'll learn everything better when you deal with it actively rather than passively. That's why it's called the production effect. <laughs> Go figure. Here's the icing on the cake. One more super simple thing that's really easy to do that will help solidify the information in your mind. When you're finished with your study session, take a break. Go for a walk, hit the gym, play a game, or take a nap. You want to give all that new information time to sink in. You'll be pleased with how well taking a break will help you retain stuff. I'd love to have you report back to me and let me know how you've used what you learned here. You motivate and excite this old man when I hear back from you. I'm always fascinated about the impact on those of you who live in the far corners of the world. For those of you who want more information about the actual study that was done, I've put a link in the description below this video. You'll also find links to other valuable resources that I believe you'll find very beneficial. Here's what's next. I've selected a couple of other videos for you to watch. I hope you take a few minutes to check them out. And I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for watching.